Admittedly, it took a pretty disappointing situation to get me to make this video. On my most recent trip across Southern Oregon and Northern California, I captured video from tons of amazing places and plan to share all of them with you guys. But the vast majority of that content was lost on an SD card that pretty much got up on its two legs and walked away. I have no clue where that SD card went, but it seems long gone at this point and that's a shame. But on the plus side, these are all locations that I love and will be returning to at some point, I'm sure, so inevitably I will make up for this in future content. But the experiences my brother and I shared this past September and October were too great to not talk about. Plus, if I ever reference my experiences in one of these parks in a future ranking video, you guys will at least know what I'm referencing. Day one of the trip took place in the Willamette National Forest in Oregon, where we got to see Salt Creek Falls for the very first time. It took three hours to get to from our starting point in Portland, and that ate up quite a bit of time in the day. But this was still quite the memorable day as we got to check out Oregon's second tallest single drop on a waterfall after, of course, Multnomah Falls. Salt Creek Falls stands 286 feet tall, and it was definitely one of the most impressive impressive waterfalls I've ever seen in Oregon. We also embarked on a four mile hike through the forestry to get to Diamond Creek Falls, which I found to be an incredible complement to the area. With this one, there's a lower view and an upper view, and it's a little hard to figure out how to get to each because signage is limited. But the lower view is definitely best for this waterfall, especially since the upper one is partially blocked by trees. Day two was a super busy one, so we woke up very early and drove an hour and a half south to the Umqua National Forest. Here, we checked out Oregon's Highway of Waterfalls, which features a variety of stunning falls, as well as the Umqua Hot Springs which we made sure to do as well. The hot springs have been susceptible to overcrowding and locals really don't like it when you make it widely known on social media, so please, if you visit, pick up after yourself. There were a variety of pools that felt absolutely incredible in the cold Umqua forest. From there, we went chasing waterfalls, starting with the smallest of the main four along the highway. Clearwater Falls was definitely the least memorable for me, standing 29 feet tall and flowing alongside mossy rocks. Pleasant, but nothing to write home about. Whitehorse Falls was waterfall number two, and while it's also quite small, it's a lot prettier in my opinion. Watson Falls is the tallest waterfall on the route at 272 feet tall. It's also the tallest waterfall in Southern Oregon as Salt Creek Falls is technically in Central Oregon. This one we remembered being absolutely incredible when we first saw it in 2021, but it didn't have nearly as much flow this time around, which was disappointing. Lastly, Tokety Falls is the most popular waterfall of the four and certainly the most unique. It has these super cool basalt columns and caves behind the falls where there's a number of tiers. Altogether, this one stands 113 feet tall. Up next was a half day plan for Crater Lake National Park. This was my second visit to the park and the first time I've covered it here on the channel. It's more reason for me to be upset about losing the footage, especially since the visit was so amazing. Last time we came, the park was snowed in, so we only got to check out one overlook and that was it. This time though, the entire rim drive was available, including all of the overlooks and hiking trails stemming off from it. Coming from the north, we began with Merriam Point, easily one of the most memorable views that day. I was in disbelief by the sheer size of Crater Lake and the fact that it has the most incredible dark blue color I've ever seen. Watchman Peak Trailhead is another great spot to view the crater, but it's accentuated by hiking 1.7 miles out and back to a fire tower where you get to literally capture the entirety of Crater Lake in one frame. But easily the highlight from our time at Crater Lake was the Mount Scott Trail. This is a 4.3 mile out and back hike to the highest point in the park, Mount Scott. At 8,832 feet tall, this peak provides an out of this world view of the crater from afar, and because we timed our hike right with sunset, this was probably the single best view from the entire trip. On day three of the trip, we made our way into California in one of our favorite regions in the state, Shasta County. Of course, home to Mount Shasta, one of the highest points in the contiguous United States, and we'd do several hikes that gave awesome views of the mountain. One of these can be found at Castle Crag State Park, which we visited prior in May 2021 as a part of our two-week California road trip. So there is already a video on this place, albeit a low-quality one from back when I was just getting started, up on the channel. I've always said Castle Crags was the most underrated state park in California, and after a revisit, I definitely stand by that. The Castle Dome Trail is 5.2 miles out and back and has so many great views of not only the jagged rock formations, which are so cool, but also Mount Shasta itself. Also part of the Castle Crags Wilderness area, but still a 35 minute drive north, is the Heart Lake Trail from Castle Lake. This was a new experience for us, and I was very impressed by the scenery. It's three miles out and back, and starts at a large, beautiful body of water. You then make your way up the mountain, encapsulating the lake, and end at a smaller lake, where there's an incredible view looking down at Castle Lake and Mount Shasta. We also got to see some waterfalls in the Shasta region, both of which were revisits for us. Again, there's already a video up on the channel talking about these spots and how to access them, but it's always a pleasure visiting Moss Bray Falls, as well as Bernie Falls. On day four, it was finally time to get back to Lassen Volcanic National Park. This was pretty much the driving force as to why we wanted to do this entire trip. When we went to Lassen National Park in 2021, the scenic byway providing access to all of its best hiking trails was snowed in. So we finally got to come back and experience what we missed out on last time. But that wasn't before we saw two little brown bears hanging out along a creek, an absolutely incredible first impression to this visit at the park. This was on the way to see the park's largest geothermal site, Bump 
bump as hell. I had seen pictures and videos of bump as hell and knew it would be amazing, but what surprised me also was the 2.7 mile out and back hike to get there. Your initial view once you get started is looking up at Lassen Peak, the namesake of the park, with the breathtaking Lake Helen in front of it. Then you get some long range views of the park's Golden Mountains, which color has changed over time due to geothermal activity. Bump as hell itself easily stacks up to the best geothermal features I've seen at Yellowstone or in Iceland. It was as good as I expected and I expected a lot. Same goes for the Lassen Peak Trail. It's one of the other must-do hikes at the National Park. And again, it was pretty amazing. It's 4.9 miles out and back with 1,971 feet of elevation gain, and honestly, a pretty tough hike. The views all the way until we hit like three-fourths of the way to the summit were great, but after that, we were swallowed by cloud and couldn't see a thing. That said, we still made it to the top of the southernmost peak in the Cascade Range, Lassen Peak, at 10,457 feet tall. Oh, and I'm glad we began to make our descent when we did, because it actually started to snow, and that could have ended up being pretty dangerous, but still beautiful. Because of the sheer amount of things we wanted to do in this park, we vouched for two days at Lassen, and that was absolutely the right decision. Next up was Kings Creek Falls, accessed by a 2.8 mile out and back trail through forestry and meadows. A very pleasant hike to a very pleasant waterfall. The absolute highlight from my time at Lassen, and maybe the entire trip for me, was Cinder Cone. This can be found in the Butte Lake unit of the park, separate from the main scenic byway by an hour drive. And it takes some additional effort to get to the trailhead because there are several miles of non-paved roads to access it. The Cinder Cone is a 750 foot cone of ash that formed during two eruptions that occurred in the 1650s. The hike felt both shorter and less difficult than I thought, even in the intense weather conditions that day. The temperature was a few degrees off from freezing, there was rain flying around everywhere, strong winds, and low visibility that made us question if this were even worth doing. Because from the top of the cinder cone, there is supposed to be a view looking out at the painted dunes. Luckily, we did get to see this, and it was absolutely unbelievable. Something that looks infinitely more impressive in person, but those smooth, multicolored hills dotting the landscape is something I cannot explain in words. After this, it was time to head north back the way we came with a few new stops along the way. On day six, we went to Oregon Caves National Monument, a first for the both of us. This place is crazy remote and we had to drive several hours out of the way to come here, but I'm so glad we made the effort to do it because the Oregon Caves is probably my favorite cave park I've been to in the national park system. It was consistently stunning the whole way through, it had really beautiful natural entrances, and nice above ground scenery in the Siskiyou Mountains. My favorite experience here was a group of bats that flew directly in front of us, and I actually captured all of that on my GoPro, so this is perhaps the spot I'm most sad I lost my footage from. But I'll never forget my time here, it was so memorable, and our tour guide was awesome too. Day 7 and 8 of the trip was spent driving up the Oregon coast and stopping at a bunch of different locations. One I was pretty excited to visit for the first time was Samuel Boardman State Scenic Corridor, and more specifically, the Natural Bridges portion of the park. And while it was undoubtedly beautiful and extremely pleasant, I can't help but admit that I was a little disappointed walking away from Samuel Boardman. There's really not much to do aside from a few quick overlooks, so you're in and out pretty quickly. I did enjoy myself, but I don't understand why this is some people's favorite spot on the Oregon coast. I actually preferred a spot about a half hour north that doesn't seem to be as well known. Cape Sebastian has a really cool hike that starts up high and ends low at a beach. I thought it was a really pretty and diverse hike. Another something we wanted to do while we were on the coast was check out some nearby waterfalls, and a spot we hadn't seen before was Golden and Silver Falls State Natural Area. It's located about 45 minutes from the coastline, and it's an absolutely breathtaking area. The forestry is so lush, but unfortunately, the waterfalls weren't flowing hard at all. A month later, and the flow probably would have elevated the entire park for me. On the plus side, I spotted a salamander crossing the trail on the way back, and I'm always on the lookout for these guys when I'm in rainy places these days, so that was a cool sight. If you ask me, by far the coolest spots along the Oregon coast are in the central portion. Oregon Dunes National Recreation Area protects one of the largest expanses of temperate coastal sand dunes in the world. It's so unique how sand dunes meet with forestry that hit the coastline, so in that way, this is easily the most unorthodox place on the Oregon coast. We did the Oregon Dunes Loop Trail, which is four miles and encapsulates all of what the park has to offer. At one point, we even got to see an individual sea lion hanging out on the beach too. Now, my favorite location on the Oregon coast, Cape Perpetua, is not one I want to discuss too much in this video because I actually do still have my footage from there. So I will be making a separate video dedicated to Cape Perpetua in the very near future. But I will say, the place is absolutely amazing and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Our last stop on the road trip was Drift Creek Falls, another waterfall located about 45 minutes from the coastline. I've done this trail a couple times now and it's actually always been one of my favorite waterfall hikes in Oregon. What's so cool about this one is you get to view the already impressive waterfall from a suspension bridge 100 feet in the air. This can be pretty scary for those afraid of heights, but if you can conquer that fear, it's well worth checking out, and the whole area is stunning with the forestry all around you. So that's every single place we visited on our week-long trip across Southern Oregon and Northern California. As much as it sucks to have lost so much footage from this trip, all of the memories we made will live on in our heads. It was an incredible time we had, and I already can't wait for the day I get to return to this part of the country. Even with the lost content, though, I can confidently say there will not be a video drought because I've been doing a 
bunch of other stuff for the channel lately too. This includes a short trip to the Northeast to see fall colors and lots of planning that has gone into a Utah, Arizona road trip that'll be making its way to Travel Dash at some point before the year is over. So I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Thank you all so much and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.